Hey everybody! Today, Rotto runs through Hot Shots, which is a cooperative wildfire fighting game. I'm going to be doing a two-player run today, so you can see what it's all about. Well, before we get going, I strongly recommend you turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel, so if I make any rules goofs, you'll know what they are. Okay, have you done so? And welcome to the forest, baby. It's burning down all around us. Burn, baby, burn is our problem today. Now, I've already got the game set up here, and this is interesting. I've got it in the was a Grand Canyon configuration. You can see there the game comes with several different tile layouts that suggest based on the shape of natural parks in America. The default way to lay it out according to the rules is just kind of a simple little hexagon there. But I kind of like the more uh, gradual spread out look here. So we are desperately trying to stop the spread and actually put out all the fires that are on the board. After you've laid the board out by just putting all the tiles out randomly in whatever shape you're going to do, some of the tiles have this little dot on it which means they start on fire. Now, every tile has a scorch number which means if that much fire appears on that tile, it will become scorched which is a bad thing. We lose if eight tiles get scorched. And sometimes other bad events can happen if you lose a tile due to scorching. Um, and since this place started on fire, I was supposed to take the scorch value minus two. So that's why there's one over here. This tile has a scorch value of five, which is why since it starts on fire, there are three. And there's three over here on this one and so forth and so on. Right, so uh, the place is burning. Here's where we start in the main camp, and actually, I'm going to be the Swamper. Jen, my wife, is going to be the Spotter, but there are four different characters. We could also be the Crew Boss or the, the Sawyer. Everybody has special powers. And uh, these are little standee figures, but I've got them lying down on the table so you can see them a bit easier. Normally, they'd be standing up with uh, nice little figures like that. So anyway, so we're, we're started out here. We're ready to go. We're going to try and save this place. And like I said, if eight places get scorched, we lose. We win when we get rid of all of the fire. So wish me luck. Now, here's the way it works. On your turn, first you move, then you fight fires, then the fire fights back. Because as part of setup, we shuffle up this deck and spread throughout it are six opportunities for the winds to change direction. At the beginning of the game, the winds are blowing north. So if there's a wind card, it's going to make the fire spread northwards. And that's something we can bear in mind. But I've got a more pressing issue. Remember how I was saying over here, if two more flames ever appear on this zone, it'll get scorched. And sometimes that's a bad thing. I mean, again, eight scorches you lose. But more importantly, if this tile gets scorched, I am the Swamper character who has the special power of being able to use shovels and hoes uh, interchangeably when I roll dice. Actually, they're not, they're called shovels, but the hoes are called McClouds, I think, which is named after uh, a famous firefighter who actually invented this special type of rake slash hoe in one uh, device. You can see a picture of it right there. But anyway, so if this place is lost, I lose my special power. So that's bad news. In, in fact, if, it, if this were just some campground or something like that, I think we just let this burn because it's so far out. It's going to be really, really hard to get all the way out there. And it's a one-way trip to go out there and then come back. I'd let it burn because you, you can't save all these tiles. Some of them are going to go up. But since if this goes up, I lose my special power, that's a problem. This is our first big issue. It's my turn, and I'm going to move, and I'm going to do something about it. Now, when you're moving, you can move up to two spaces. Um, although, if you move into a space with fire, you're done. You can't move any farther forward. So, um, normally, I could go one, two. But if I was here, if I went one, I'd be done moving because I can't... Uh, you know, getting into a space with fire stops me in my tracks. Also, this rocky tile is a special one where even if there wasn't fire, it takes two movement to move in here, which takes up all your movement because you normally only have two movement. Now, I'm going to use my two movement, and I'm going to go one, two, up to the airfield, which randomly, luckily, happens to be only two steps away from our camp. You know, our, our firefighting camp. I mean, might have been a bit more unlucky. I mean, this might have been, um, you know, very, very far away or something like that. But as it is, uh, it was pretty easy to get to. And I am now done with my movement. The next thing I can do is fight fires. Now, normally what that means is normally you end your movement standing in a tile where there is fire. Because that's what we're here trying to do. And you start rolling these dice like crazy in a Yahtzee-style push-your-luck game. 
But I didn't go to where flames are. Instead, I came to the airfield. So instead of rolling dice to fight a fire, since there isn't one on this space, I'm going to use one of these three vehicles, the, uh, the plane, the helicopter, and the truck. Each one has a different function, and you can only ever use them once. I'm going to go on ahead and use the helicopter right now because this is a targeted firefighting dump that lets me put out up to three fires anywhere on the board, just like that. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to basically have the helicopter come all the way over here and just instantly put this fire out. Because again, I normally I wouldn't worry too much about it, but I did not want this place to go up. And now the helicopter is done. And now, interestingly, this is where I started. I actually rode the helicopter out here, and now this is where I am. Um, and so I got to start walking all the way back. But hey, I can fight this fire along the way and you know these fires over here around the lake and all that. But I'm very much separated from my teammate. And that's a bad thing because if players stick together, it helps them fight fires much more effectively. So... Um, you know, I could have just instead moved over here and started firing this fire. And if I didn't finish it on Jen's turn, she could move in and help me out. But instead, I rushed up to the airfield, made a big, big trip over here, and took care of a very pressing problem. So, first I moved, then I fought fires, in this case, doing it in a very special way. And now I move on to the fire stage where the fire fights back. We draw a card at the end of our turn and we see what the fire has in store for us. Okay, this means one of the tiles that has a scorch value of four, which is already on fire, gets two more flames on it. And that's bad news um, because that this tile, which has a scorch value of four, has two flames on it. It just got two more, and boom! Um, it hit its limit, and this tile is now scorched. Just like that. Uh, we never had a chance to put this fire out. So what happens when a tile is scorched is, it gets flipped, like I talked about before. And now, seven more tiles go, we lose. But it's not done yet. This is now burned out, but one of the embers from it transfers to an adjacent space, whichever space has the lowest tor um, um, the, the, the lowest uh, scorch value. So there's a three, a four, a three, a four, and a one. Oh no, this thing just got hit. The embers move on to the uh, closest place with the lowest number, which is this. It has a one. And boom, just like this, this place went up too. Oh my gosh, two of our eight. And now the ember is going to continue to spread from here to the adjacent one that has the lowest scorch value, which is this cabin out here in the woods. So I had a good first turn, but then we had a very bad end of my first turn. We can only have six more burned down, which is a problem. But um, scorched tiles are also an opportunity because fire can't spread on them. And what that means is uh, scor the more scorched tiles there are, the less the wind can push flames around. Now, in this round, we didn't see the wind pushing stuff around, but you'll see that before too long. Anyway, that was it. My first turn was over. I didn't use my swamp for special power. I just moved up here, uh, got on a helicopter, came over here, and saved the day. It is now Jen's turn. All right, and now where is she going to go? Well, first of all, she's going to move up to two spaces. She could come up here and um, use the plane or the truck. But now is not a good time to use either of them. The helicopter was a targeted thing where you can just pick one tile anywhere and take out three. The plane takes out three adjacent tiles, one flame off of each of them. So right now, that's not a good time. I mean, we could use the plane to take out a, a, a single flame from here and here, but then it wouldn't be taking out a third. So now is not a good time to use the plane. Using the truck, instead of putting out fires, puts these fire breaks down. You get to put three of them down in a line wherever you want, and that can spread the stop the uh, spread of stop the spread of fire as well. Like for instance, we know that the uh, winds are blowing north. These flames up here will eventually spread fire over here into our supply camp, which randomly is in this space. If this place burns up, all of our potential bonus tiles we might earn will disappear. That's very scary. We don't want to lose this tile. But hey, um. Yeah, so what we could do is put a uh, firewall here. Right? It's not what they're called, but putting a firewall means that the fire can usually cannot be spread by wind up into this space. Strong winds can still skip over our firewalls, or fire breaks, I think they're called, but, um, right. Still, Jen's trying to decide where she's going to go. She could go one, two, and start trying to fight this fire, um, or she could just go one 
and start trying to fight this fire. Or she could use the plane or the truck. I don't think she's going to do that. I think since I'm over here now and it really behooves us to be together, I think Jen will just move one space and then she stops in her tracks because of the fire. But like I said, in this case, she would have stopped anyway because it takes two movement to get into this space. So if she was over here and wanted to get in here, she wouldn't be able to. She'd go one, and then she couldn't get in here because she only has two movement. But since she's here, she's going to move in here and start trying to fight this fire in this rocky area. Although, that's not that big a deal. Because from here, if the winds blow, this fire cannot spread north because it's all scorched. This is the trickier one. But Jen, doesn't, Jen wants to come over here so she can um, you know, rendezvous with me and we can work together to fight fires. But it just doesn't make sense because this fire is not as dangerous. This one, if it spreads north, could really ruin us. So I think instead, Jen is not going to go the way. She's going to go one, two, and she's going to fight this area over here. And by the way, if this tile is lost, if there was a player who was the Sawyer, that player would lose their special ability. Now, I don't mind losing this tile because we don't have a Sawyer, but I do mind the flames spreading north. So it seems like a reasonable thing to do. Let's come over here and start trying to fight the fire. So, Jen's done moving, now she fights fire. Which means, instead of activating a vehicle like I did, she starts rolling them bones. She rolls them all, and what she's trying to do is, she's trying to get matches to these icons on this tile. She needs two chainsaws, an axe, a firefighter, she needs some smarts, and she needs two hoses. Uh, if she could roll all six of these, that would be awesome. But, she wants to get at least three of these icons. If she only makes two of these icons, nothing good happens. Um, if she doesn't get any of the icons, something very bad happens. But ideally, she wants to get three, four, five, or all six of these. The more of these she gets, the better. And she's going to be Yahtzeeing it. Uh, because she can roll and then re-roll and then re-roll, potentially. Let's see what happens. Alrighty. So, right off the bat, hey, she got the axe, which it's not actually called an axe. Let me look it up. It's actually called a Pulaski, uh, because it's a combination of an axe and a spade that was designed by a famous firefighter who saved many lives in 1910, uh, Ed Pulaski. So, Jen rolled a Pulaski, she rolled a hose, she rolled a fireman. Oh my gosh, this is a great roll. And she rolled two shovels and another fireman. Now, these aren't of any value to her. So, these three Jen's going to lock in place um, to uh, attack to deal with three of the six icons. Now, when you roll, if you cannot lock any dice in, you're in trouble, and there's going to be a blowout, which means the fire spreads automatically. But as long as you lock at least one of your dice successfully to one of the icons on the tile, then it's all cool, and you can choose to push your luck and roll again. And here's Jen's first choice. If she rolls again, she's rolling for chainsaws and hoses. And she's rolling three dice. Uh, each one of these dice, there's only one of each icon on it. So, she's, um, if she gets a chainsaw or a hose, she'll be successful. If she rolls again and doesn't get a chainsaw or hose, then she'll have lost this progress. And in fact, there will be a blowout right in front of her, which is very, very scary. Um, or a blow-up. A blow-up is what it's called. So, this is the push your luck. If Jen rolls again... It's very, very dangerous. And see, that's why it's good to be fighting alongside your fellow firefighters. Because for everybody who's in your area with you, you can afford to push your luck. And if it blows up in your face, they will provide you support that cancels one blow up. So you can push your luck with... I mean, if, if, if I were over here with Jen, she would uh, definitely, definitely re-roll and hopefully get something. And um, in this case... You know, this would she would have failed because she's already lost. She needed chainsaws and hoses. She didn't get any. This means she would have had a blow up. But because I was here, she could avoid one blow up, and then she could decide if she wants to push her luck and try again. And if she tried again, hey, she got the chainsaw, so it would have been successful. Now the problem is, I am not with her. She is all by herself. Does she feel lucky? I don't think she does. She is not going to push her luck because as you saw, you know, I, I, you know, if she pushed her luck, um, you know, this would be a fail and it would blow up on her, which means another fire would appear here right away and this thing would almost hit its five limit, which means the place would get scorched, which is very bad. So Jen is not going to push her luck since she's by herself. So she's stopping. Now, you can check on your card after you're done rolling if you got 
at least three matching icons. If you locked in three icons, you get to place a fire break. Four of them means you get to remove one flame from the space. Five of them means you get to remove two flames and you either put a fire break down or get a random reward token. All six, if you can match all six, which may sound impossible, but if you've got your teammates there with you, you have a better shot. Plus there's special powers and things like that too. But if you get all six, you get rid of three flames um, and you take a reward token and you put a fire break down. So Jen only got three three successes, so she's going to use those to put down a fire break, which is the most important thing right now anyway, because if the winds blow north, um, it's unlikely that they will pass over this fire break now. So, phew! And now, Jen herself doesn't have to worry. She's a strong firefighter. She knows how to stay alive. She's not in any danger ending her turn here, um, where, where there's fire, potentially. But anyway, now, it's the end of her turn. And if she moved, she fought fire, and now she's going to have to draw a card. But Jen is the spotter. And her special power is she draws two cards, picks the one she likes, and then the other one goes back on the top of the deck. So let's see what Jen can choose from. All righty. <clears throat> Ah, so this means the, um, the direction of the wind would change and start going northeast. All of a sudden, if it starts going northeast, Jen doesn't really care about this break because it can't go north anymore. Uh, it starts going northeast, and there's a light wind, which is what this icon means, which means um, if, if this gets played right now, the wind is going to change to be northeast, and that means this fire will spread northeast into here. This one can't spread because there's nothing there. This one can't spread. This one could spread, and this one can't spread because again, you cannot go into scorched earth. So this is not a good time for this one to happen. And since Jen's got her power, I think she'll make this one wait until next turn because she is the spotter. So the wind is still going north. This one, instead, the one she's going to choose to happen means wherever the barn is, the barn gets one flame on it. Embers fall specifically onto the barn. And now the... which means... Um, in the future, the wind could blow north. But again, we know next turn, the wind is going to change directions anyway. All right. Uh, thanks to her spotting ability. That was Jen's first turn. And now it is my second turn. I'm way the heck over here. There's nothing much to do. So first of all, I'm going to move. And because I've hit a fire, even though I have two movement, I can't move any farther. So I'm going to stay here and fight this fire. And this is a good thing to do because I know at the end of my turn, the wind is going to change and this fire would spread right over here. So if I can put it out before that happens, that's going to be good news. So let's start rolling. I need a firefighter, a chainsaw, and three McClouds, or the, the blue rakes. Let's get all our dice back. And this is perfect for me because of my swamper ability, which is... If I roll shovels, I can convert them to McClouds or the rakes. If I roll rakes, I can convert them to shovels. So this needs um, you know, four McClouds. So I've got a pretty good shot at being able to do well here because either shovels or McClouds, the, the special rake, work for me. Let's roll. All righty. Hey, I got a McCloud. And let's see, did I get a chainsaw? I got a firefighter, so I got two of the things I needed. And now I need a chainsaw and three more McClouds. I rolled a shovel. I will convert this into a McCloud. So I only need one chainsaw and two more. So now I could stop right now which means all I do is put a fire break. I'd put it right here because I know which way the wind is going to change and that would stop the fire from spreading. That wouldn't be bad, but because of my special power, I'm feeling sassy. I'm going to push my luck because all I got to do on one of these three dice, if I roll a McLeod or a shovel, will be A-OK. -okay. So let's go for it. Wah! And oh my God. Oh my God. Wow. Okay, that was not what I expected. I expect, oh, well, that would have been, that would have bust too. That's what I expected because, hey, I would have turned this into McLeod. I would have had four. I wanted to get four because that meant I could have put this fire out. But I pushed my luck and my Swamper ability did not save me because I ended up with something like this. I can't convert any of these into the extra McLeod I need. So I bust. I pushed my luck. I could have saved this, this little campfire ground, but it didn't go my way. I bust. And what that means is... I have a blow up. An additional fire appears where I am um, and I, I get nothing. Now, if, the, if uh, this had been the third fire here, the whole thing would have scorched. And if a tile scorches while you're there, that is very, very bad. Um, I mean, because we start losing our dice and things get tougher and tougher as our guys get wounded. But as it is, 
Uh, that is, that's not great. Um, so I, I failed. And in fact, I even made things worse here at this little uh, cabin out in the woods. And now at the end of my turn, we draw and we already know what it's going to be. Hey, the winds are changing and there's a light wind. So now everything that can moves into an adjacent northeast, which means these spread over here. This there's nothing there to spread to. This is scorched. This a light wind means it um, only will spread into an empty space. Since there's already a fire here, this won't spread. But since there's a fire here, this will spread over here. These ones can't spread over there. Ouch! That is not pretty, folks. I failed miserably. Oh my gosh! But don't worry, it ain't over yet. Um, although that's not good. All right. So now it is Jen's turn again. And what is she going to do? She could stay here and keep fighting this fire, but um, you know it's not like uh, it's it's not like there's any danger of wind going. Um, and over here, this space, uh, if, if we if we have another wind blowing, this will transfer over here. So as much as Jen would like to stay and fight this, I think Jen is going to move, so she can move one and stop, or she could go one two and go over there. Where is she going to go? Um. Let's see here. I guess she'll just move one because she'd really rather not have our supply area fill in. Plus, there's only one. If she could get rid of this, that would be fantastic. So she's moved and she hit a fire, so she stopped moving. And now she's going to start rolling. She's looking for, uh, well, what we, uh, not McCluskey's. She's looking for Pulaski's and Firefighter and the McLeods and the Hoses, also known as Axes, Rakes, Hoses, and Firefighter. Let's see. Hey, there's the two hoses she needs, and there's the firefighter she needs, and there's the axe she needs. Now that's more like it. She got four. Now, she still needs another axe and a hoe, or a rake, or a McLeod. Does she want to roll again? No. It will blow up in her face. She's going to stop right there. She's very, very happy because four successes means she just put that fire out. She is showing me how it's done. Okay, so that was it. That was her turn. And now at the end of her turn, again, her special power is draw two and pick one. So, ooh, okay. If we let this one happen, a already burning tile with, with a four value and a five value will get an extra. Which means uh, there's a burning five over here, so it'll get an extra. And there's a burning four over here, so it'll get an extra. Now, it's interesting. If Jen hadn't put this fire out, hey, there's two tiles that have a value of five that are burning. In this case, we would get to choose which one we wanted. But as it is, if we let this go, there'll be another fire here. It'll be ready to go. And there'll be another fire here. It'll almost be ready to go. So Jen can have that happen. Or she can have a light. I think this is called a combined wind. Um, which means, as you saw before, on my turn, there was a light wind that pushed everything in a certain direction. This pushes and it adds. Because remember how my light wind said, hey, because there was fire here and it wanted to go there, but there was already occupied fire, this didn't spread. This one says the fire will spread even to the areas where there's already burning. So if we have this happen right now, from here, fire will come right back up. From here, fire will come up here. So this will start to flame up really badly too. And from here, this will go. And from here, it will push into here. That's really bad. We do not want this to happen. That is super duper scary. Let's put that off for later. Let's have this thing happen right now, which is a four and a five get hit. All righty. And well, I have no choice. This is the only four um, that's burning and the only five that's burning. So, and now next turn we know it's going to be bad. And it's my turn. What am I going to do to stop that badness? Oh my gosh. I think what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to move. I'm going to leave this cabin that I totally failed at and move over here to this campground. Because here's the thing. If I can put this fire out, when the wind happens, this fire won't push into here to push this up. This will still push into here to um, you know, flare back up. But hey, at least I will have stopped the chain that will push things even further. So um, that's why I've come here to try and put this fire out. Let's show folks how it's done. Because again, this should be really good for me. I need three shovels and I'm a cloud. That's my special power. I should be able to handle this. Let's show, let's do it to it. Now, what do I need? Okay, I needed um, two axes. I got those. And I got my McLeod. And now all I need is three shovels. Ah, so all I need is three shovels. Do I roll again? I feel like I should because that's kind of my special power. But what if it busts again? Well, I'm in luck. 
I am next to the lake. The lake is a very special tile. First of all, no one can ever walk in there because there's no time to go swimming. Um, second of all, fire will never spread in here because it's a lake. And third of all, all the tiles that are adjacent to the lake, unfortunately not these because they're scorched, but these four tiles, because they're adjacent to the lake, I have one support, which means I can avoid busting once. It's like Jen is over here with me. In fact, if Jen were here with me, because I'd have her support and I'd have support from the lake, I could avoid busting twice. But since I'm by the lake, I'm feeling pretty good. Let's re-roll. Let's show them how it's done. Let's stop this fire before it starts. Oh my god! Come on! Right. Well, so I just busted. Once again, showing my swamper power is completely useless, apparently. That's not really true. Um, but anyway, so... Um, fortunately, I'm by the lake, so it didn't bust. I can stop again, but since I'm only at three, all I get to do is dr put down a line to stop the spread. I am going to succeed. I am visualizing rakes and shovels. Rakes and shovels. All right, there we go. That's more like it. Um, I needed two more shovels. There's a shovel, and my power lets me convert this um, rake into a shovel. That is five successes, folks. That's how you swamp. And now... I could keep pushing my luck. I could roll again. And I have a 20 or 33% chance because if I get either of these, I'll get six of a kind. I'll get all six, which is the best result. But you know what? Jen's, if Jen were with me, of course I would go again because I have one more get out of jail free, one more support. But I don't. So I'm not going to roll, but let's see what would have happened if I had. I would have busted. Because, all right, so it's a good thing I didn't. I'm stopping at five. And as you recall, five means I get to remove two flames. Unfortunately, there's only one, so that's a bit wasted. So I get to remove two flames, and I get to take one of these bonus tokens, which I would not be able to use until my next turn. When you get a bonus token, you cannot use it immediately. Or I can put down a fire break. Normally... Normally, I would take the bonus token because these have all kinds of really cool powers. They're one-time uses, but they're awesome. Normally, that's what I take. But since I know what the fire is about to do, I know the wind is blowing. Instead, I'm going to put the fire break down right here as, as a bonus because I got five out of six correct. Yeah, baby. All righty. That's how we do. And now at the end of my turn, I draw... And hey, surprise, thanks to the spotter, we know the wind is still blowing northeasterly. It's a light wind, but um, it's combinatorial. So let's figure these out. Um, since it's a light wind, it stops with my fire break. Some of these wind socks, they look like they're blowing hard. In fact, have we seen one so far? No, we haven't. But if it's blowing at a full wind, that means it's a heavy wind, and it would have gone right over my fire break, but I knew it couldn't because I knew what it was, thanks to Jen's spotting. So that stops here. There's nothing to go there. This is scorched. This, however, does move over here, and this area does move over here. So I was so keen on how well I did over there. Kind of still got some problems over there, folks. Um, but anyway, and now this can't blow... And so, that was the end of my turn. I was feeling a little bit better about my contributions to the team. And now it is Jen's turn. So, she can stay where she is and keep fighting this fire. Because if, if, if the wind blows again, it's just going to push in here. But again, they, we can afford four here. The problem is, this cabin, if this goes... It's already at um, three. Uh, or, no, it's at two. If it gets one more, we're done. And, and it's going to take a hit. So I think Jen is going to move. But Jen's not going to fight fire this time. Jen's going to move one space. And she's going to call in the plane, everybody. Yeehaw! Now, this is a one-time thing. And remember how the helicopter I used right at the beginning? You pick any one space and remove three tiles. Um, with the plane, you pick three adjacent spaces and remove one fire. Um, and it could be anywhere. And so we've got a uh, So I think it's going to be these three or these three. Now, one thing you can't do, say there was like a flame here, you cannot do three because the plane, you have to imagine, it can't bank sharply. It can go here and then it could go there or it could go straight, but it can't do a really sharp bank and go like that. But, um, ooh, actually, yeah. So she's doing three. Um, so it could do this, 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 or this, 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 or this, this, this. Jen's going to hit any three of those. And the plane will drop her off in one of those spaces that she has moved to. Which are three is she going to do? This is um, on the edge of breaking. This is on the edge of breaking. This is on the edge of breaking. This one is not, and that one is not. So these two are the least problematic. Um, let's see here. I think we will have this one. So, the, you know, the, the, that one. And that one, 
and that one. All right, because in all honesty, I don't mind too terribly much if this rocky area torches, because you'll notice, as you know, it's a rocky area right now. It's harder to move in here. It takes two movement to move through here. It kind of slows us down. Once it gets torched, that's gone. Um, so it's bad if places get scorched, but in some cases, it's good too. Um, you know, I mean, and if this gets scorched, that creates a line that higher fire cannot hop from one side of the uh, of the park to the other. So I'm going to leave that one alone. I hit all three of these, and now the plane will have dropped me off here, here, or here. Uh, my choice, or I should say Jen's choice. I think she'll have dropped off over here because she can still move over here to rendezvous with me and get to this one. And, you know, there's a fire break here, so she's not worried about that, et cetera, et cetera. So that's where she got dropped off. So she moved. She fought some fire. Um, and now she's going to draw two cards and see what happens. Okay. All right, we have to hit a five space and a five space. That means we have to hit here. And right now, there are no other tiles with the value of five, so only one of these will get hit. Um, or we can have um, this tile, which I think we've already lost, haven't we? This little lodge. Yes, we have. I think it was the first thing we lost, wasn't it? No. It Was it this? No. Oh, that was the power lines. Oh, no, it's this over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait a minute. No, oh, it's this right there. Okay, let's not deal with the embers. Let's deal with this because it's not a bad thing right now because only one of these two fives could get hit. So it's here that it's going to get hit. If, it get, if we lose it, we lose it. If Again, if we had the Sawyer, we would be desperately trying to protect this because if this goes, his power goes. And his power is kind of like mine. Convert axes into chainsaws or vice versa. But since he's not in the game, if that goes, we'll live with it. And now we know next turn, embers are going to hit this little log cabin way up there. Okay. <clears throat> Righty. <clears throat> Let's see here. So it's my turn now. What am I going to do? Do I head up here knowing? Because I know another fire is going to hit that space. And I know if I fight fire here, I have the opportunity to benefit from the lake. Yeah, I think so. Because also, I'll be in the right place next round because more fire is going to pop up here because the spotter has, has seen those embers are, are starting to spread. So I'll come up here, and now let's roll. Although, this, there's one problem. This is not really a good place. This needs four hoses to put fire out at the log cabin. My power doesn't give me hoses. Um, but, you know, this space isn't any better. This is a much better place for me to fight fires in. Again, it didn't work out last time, but it needs four of the rakes, and that's what I can generate. I have a much better shot at doing that. But since it's not next to the lake, I don't get my, you know, my, my bonus or you know, my, my, uh, my avoidance. And I know, we know a fire is going to hit here no matter what because we have foreseen it. So do I move up here and try and take this out? I probably won't do as well, but hey, I get one um, get out of jail free, or do I come back here where my power works better? Even though the fire has a harder time spreading, because I, oh, I, I will come up here. It means I won't really probably get much. I mean, they do need one rake, so we'll see how it goes. So I'm moving. Let's roll. Wah! All right, well, there's, there's the rake, and no hoses, and no chainsaws. Oh my gosh. So that was one success. Um, I can't lock anything else down, so let's keep rolling. And now all I'm looking for is chainsaws and hoses. All righty. Hey, that's two hoses. There's two more successes. So now I can stop, um, but that means I've only got three successfuls. All I can do is put down a line. But hey, I know I've got one um, of, you know, get out of jail. And I need it because I failed. All, I go, all I'm going for now is um, hoses and chainsaws. I didn't get them. The lake saved me. If I roll again and I fail again, <sighs> It's not going to be pretty. Oh, it's going to be ugly, folks. And here's the thing. If I fail again, my failure means we'll get a second fire. And remember, at the end of my turn, a third fire will appear here, which means, boom, the whole thing will scorch right in front of me. I'll have a nasty, nasty chain reaction. But on the flip side, if I succeed, if I succeed, so I really should stop. I really should stop. I really should stop, but I'm going to go ahead. Here we go. Come on. Show me blue hose. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that's four successes. That means I can, but if I can get another success, if I get another success, no, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. I took a chance. And so that's four successes. All that means is I clear this out. And now at the end of my turn, this ember lands and it starts burning here again. I thought I just put this place out. All right. So that was uh, my turn, Jen's turn. Now, what's she going to do? 
Is she just going to um, fight this fire? Let's see. She could come up here and deploy the truck. And what that means is, like the plane in the helicopter, she gets to, instead of uh, putting fires out, she gets to put down a contiguous line of three fire breaks, which could be cool. Like, I mean, yeah, she could put boom, 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 and completely close this area off so fire can't get out. But it's about to scorch anyway. I don't think so. I think, will Jen just stay here and fight this fire? Or will she come over here? Because um, that's the other thing, too. When, if this thing scorches, all those fires go away. And just one little one goes to an adjacent place. So letting places scorch is a way to let the fire burn itself out. Because remember, we win as soon as all the fire is off the board, provided we haven't had eight scorches. I think Jen's just going to stand still and just fight this little flame um, and be in position so that if this blows, uh, the fire is going to spread over here. And then she can run over here and fight this fire because this is a propane tank. Only two flames. If they build up here, this... Uh, remember, normally if a place scorches, just one fire hops. If this place blows up, every place adjacent, it hops. So that would be a bit scarier. So Jen's just going to stay here, wait for this to blow, and then fight this. And hopefully we let this go so it's easier to walk through here. So Jen's going to fight. She's not moving at all. Let's see what happens. Right, what did she need? She needed firemen. She got two. She needed a shovel. She got one. And she needed an axe. Hey, she got four just like that. She could stop. She, um, if she busts, yeah, she's just going to stop. She's just going to get rid of that. Easy peasy. And now at the end of her turn, once again, the spotter draws two. The spotter is insanely powerful in a two-player game or a solo. Ooh, okay. A five and a five gets hit. If this one happens, then we're going to get this scorched. That, and we knew this was going to happen eventually because it was too late. We're, we're leaving this place to go. So now's a good time for this to happen. This is a heavy wind. This says that um, the fire is going to spread in the direction of the wind and it'll hop over our barriers. And it's one where the fires will build. So, I mean, this fire will spread, oh, will, will spread and ignore it. This will spread over here. Still, we'll have that happen later. Let's have this happen right now. And the five and a five gets hit. A five that's already burning. There's only one five that's burning. This gets hit and boom. This is our third scorch tile. And if we had the Sawyer, he would lose his power. And now the embers from that spread to the adjacent one that is lowest, which is over here. It's exactly what we thought. And now we're worried. That's why Jen stayed here so she can go and take care of this place next. All right. Um, although, we just have to worry about that right now. My turn. What am I going to do? Hey, there's a fire here. I might as well just stand my ground and fight it. Um, or I could move over here and try and fight this because I know this is going to spread, but I can't put out two. Well, I could, but I'd have to get crazy lucky, and I've been very unlucky out at this little uh, manor. So I think I'm just going to stand still and try to put this fire down. Let's go. Um, right. And okay, I got a hose, and I got a rake. And okay, I need more hoses and a chainsaw. Two is not enough for anything. Let's keep going. All righty, there's my third hose. I still need more hoses. And a chainsaw, so let's keep going. All right, I busted, but I'm next to the lake, so I get one get out of jail free. Oh, wait, no, no, I didn't bust. I got a chainsaw, baby. Oh, yeah, um, that's pretty nice. I just need two more hoses. Let's keep rolling. And I got another hose. Oh, my gosh. And you know what? I haven't busted yet. Let's keep rolling. <gasps> wow, I didn't even need this lake. I got six. Six. Now, six is much better in a place where there's a lot of fire because um, a full six means I get to remove three flames. Although, unfortunately, there's only one flame. And I get to put down a, a fire break. I'll put it here because fire will never come from here or here because the lake and the scorched area. So I'll just put that fire break there and I get a bonus token. What do I get? Um, I get to pick on some future turn. I don't have to draw a fire card if I don't want it to happen. And combined with Jen's spotter ability, that's going to be really awesome. Now, I'm not really worried. I'm not going to use this. No, first of all, I can't use this on the turn I got it. But in a future turn, I could use it. It's the end of my turn. Hey, we know uh, the wind is a blowing. So uh, this hops right over because it was a strong wind. This can't go in there. This hops right here. And this can't go anywhere. So that was fine. It is now Jen's turn. She could stay here and fight, but she really wants to come down here because if this place blows, boom, boom, um, both of these things get hit. And that's no bueno. All uh, right. 
And I think I'm going to stop right there, folks, because that should give you a pretty good idea of what Hot Shots is all about. Now, if you want to hear some final thoughts, you can hit that eye up in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.